Hello friends, my name is George Zuckerman. Some of you may remember me as artistic director of White Rock Concerts from its inception in 1956 until 2015. I'm now the artistic director emeritus and it's great to be able to chat with you in this way through the video. Agreed, it would have been a lot better if I could have been on stage and able to address you directly. But as we emerge from the springtime of this pandemic into a summer of uncertainty, this method of saying hello is probably the best we've got. Well, now some of the uncertainty is over, and we know that the 2021 concerts will not be taking place as we'd hoped. The season is cancelled, subscriptions are suspended, and the concerts are postponed. I shall miss terribly the excitement of every one of those evening concerts. You have to pick your own choice of which name you want to use, cancellation, subscription, suspension. You should pick your own favorite term. Actually, I prefer not to use the word cancellation. Instead, since the concerts won't be taking place, let's view it as a kind of a sabbatical, a pause in our regular activity while all of us enjoy a chance to recharge our energy and our enthusiasm. I can see a huge membership returning to White Rock concerts when we finally launch a full campaign, hopefully in a year from now, in the 2021-22 season. That doesn't mean that cancellations and real cancellations don't happen. Join me in my time machine back to the last century. Remember those carefree days when we traveled so easily wherever we wanted to go? Here it is. November the 23rd, 1973. I was on my way to Athens for an engagement with the Symphony Orchestra of the Hellenic National Broadcasting Institute, the HNBI, which is the equivalent of our Canadian CBC. The flight from Rome was short, smooth and uneventful. We landed in brilliant sunshine, taxied slowly towards the terminal of the old Hellenican International Airport, and through the windows of the plain, I could see the Acropolis, the ancient city, the Parthenon, set on its pedestal, just above the modern Athens skyline. The plane came to a halt at the terminal, the engines were turned off, and then nothing happened. For 15 minutes we sat. The air conditioning was off. We sweltered in the early daytime heat until finally the door swung open and the passengers near the front of the aircraft where I was seated could see that the portable staircase that should have been wheeled towards the plane was at least two meters away. Talk about social distancing. At the top of the stairway, wielding Kalashnikov AK-47 rifles, stood two military police. Clearly, nobody was going to get off Flight 307. The pilot came on the intercom laconically. Hello, Athens passengers. It seems we have chosen a most awkward time to arrive. Just this morning, they have had a small revolution, a coup d'etat, and Athens is closed to all visitors. I'm afraid we are being denied landing permission. Within minutes, we were airborne en route to Tel Aviv. Total duration of my Greek vacation, 42 minutes and 15 seconds. Well, no doubt about that. 
it was certainly a definite cancellation and there was no way for me to contact the HNBI. I figured that anyhow they would be otherwise busy. Radio stations are usually the first place that revolutionaries go to disseminate their messages. Bassoon concertos didn't exactly fit in with the coup d'etat. So that was a permanent postponement. It's what in the business we refer to as a force majeure or an act of God. Revolutions are in the same category as earthquakes, floods, fires, and pandemics. And we know all too well today that these are things over which we have very little control. I never heard again from the Hellenic National Broadcast Institute nor they from me. But I must tell you that one day when travel becomes feasible again, I plan to make a short trip to Athens. I want to pick up my set of orchestral material for the Mozart bassoon concerto, which is still buried somewhere deep in the HNBI's music library beneath the Parthenon. Meantime, in those intervening years, Greece has experienced a few more coup d'etat, but it's now a relatively stable member of the EU. White Rock Concerts is also just as solidly anchored in the musical life of our community, and we're all looking forward to being back together when it's safe to congregate once again for concerts. Finally, I thought you might enjoy the attached story, also from that wonderful time of extensive international travel. It's entitled, A Gift to be Simple. There's a musical introduction, which is the slow movement of that very same Mozart concerto, which I should have played in Athens back in 1973. I hope you enjoy the music. I hope you enjoy the story. I'm sure we'll all be meeting again soon. A gift to be simple. When Murray Adaskin and his Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra gave the world premiere of his Prairie Suite in late 1959, I was traveling in the far north of the province of Saskatchewan on an organizational trip. I decided to try to attend the concert. What had looked like a perfectly ordinary secondary road on the map turned out to be a Department of Natural Resources forestry trail, better designed for jeeps and four-wheel drive vehicles than a compact rental car. By the time I arrived in Saskatoon four hours later, I was weary, dusty, and in need of a stiff drink. The music department at the University of Saskatoon was housed in two rooms in the agriculture building. Earthy farm aromas filled the air in Murray's teaching studio. I found the maestro in great despair. Thank goodness you are here. Do you have your bassoon with you? He waved a sheet of music in front of me, and I recognized his immaculate music penmanship. In those days before computer music programs, the art of music copying was a form of elegant calligraphy, and Murray was a master of the art. Our bassoon player has just called in. She's ill and cannot make it tonight. 
But I don't have a bassoon with me. I'm on a business trip, I said. We'll get you one, he insisted. You have to play tonight. But I haven't rehearsed. That doesn't matter. You're a good sight reader. You know my style. I'll cue you. The union will not let me perform with non-union members. Our second clarinetist is the union secretary. We'll obtain a special waiver for you. I don't have any decent clothes. That doesn't matter. Just dust off a little. You'll be fine. Here's your music. With that, he thrust the page into my hands. Before I could protest any longer, a borrowed high school bassoon appeared, complete with three ancient reeds, one caked solidly with lipstick, one cracked down the middle, and the third, which was made barely playable after ten minutes of ardent scraping with a hastily procured kitchen knife. An hour later, I was on stage sight-reading the bassoon part of a world premiere of a new piece under the composer's baton. Somewhere in my curriculum vitae is it listed that I was for one night a member of the Saskatoon Symphony. Murray's Prairie Suite was a triumph that evening. Saskatoon symphony goers in the late 50s were not traditionally well disposed to contemporary work. Yet many of the audience that night sensed a new significance in the performance of a work which was so obviously inspired by their province. Secretly, it was a joy to participate in such an evening of community music making. A fee for the performance was the last thing that had crossed my mind. A year later, a package arrived in Vancouver. It contained the score of Murray's bassoon concerto, which he had written during the intervening summer and dedicated to me. I sometimes look upon that gift from his heart as the finest concert fee that I ever received. I premiered the concert in 1960 with the Vancouver Symphony. Murray had a lifelong appreciation of the bassoon and he wrote several other works for me, including a quintet with the bassoon and string quartet, his vocalese number two for solo bassoon, and a remarkable trio for violin, bassoon and French horn, his divertimento number three. Before he died in 2002, I had asked him if he would ever consider writing a second bassoon concerto. Murray, I said, if there were two bassoon concertos, just think of it, when I suggested the Adaskin to a conductor, he or she would be compelled to answer, yes, but which one? <laughs>